across um, different domains, if you like, it affects their, their thinking, their, their speaking, um, and really it's pervasive right the way across um, everything a person does. So this is, for a lot of people, a massively um, disabling and uh, condition, but for a significant proportion, is actually quite enabling. And I'll talk a little bit about some of the positives of autism a bit later, because I think there's too uh, much um, focus, I think, on the negative consequences of what it means to have autism. So having autism isn't wholly a negative thing. I want to frame it in those terms. So as I said, autism is a syndrome. It's a cluster of symptoms, and they appear in a particular combination. And um, this combination, um, some have characterized as a triad of impairments, and I'll present that to you a little bit later on. So this spectrum or cluster of symptoms that characterize the disorder range from very low functioning, as we saw in Lorna Wing's definition there, to really, really quite high functioning, or what some people categorize as Asperger's syndrome. Um, a lot of you will be familiar with Asperger's syndrome here. Um, in fact, there are quite few people with um, the lower end, if you like, um, spectrum um, within Second Life, and I think Second Life can offer uh, a limited amount um, to people at the lower end, because one of the distinctions is that people um, at the very disabling end of autism are incredibly disabled, um, especially young children, and they um, often don't have traditional forms of language. Um, that doesn't mean to say they can't communicate. It just means to say that they are nonverbal in the traditional sense, of, um, you know, a coherent language that the majority of people understand. So autism is um, um, its presence is is of markedly uh, markedly abnormal or impaired development in social interaction and communication, and markedly restricted repertoire of activity and interests. And this accounts at the higher end uh, for Asperger's syndrome, where people with Asperger's syndrome tend to have um, language, it accounts for some of the peculiarities we see. Okay, I'm going to briefly introdu introduce um, what is known as the DSM-4. Now, the DSM-4 is a, a really thick manual. Um, it's the Diagnostic and Statistical um, Manual of Mental Disorders version 4. It's by the um, American Psychiatric Association, and it's really the benchmark for all psychiatric disorders. And autism happens to be included in one of these classifications within this book, um, based on research called Pervasive Developmental Disorder, or PDD. And it's clustered along with um, some other symptoms there. So we have autistic disorder, which is the, the formal name, if you like, for autism, along with things like Rett's disorder, childhood disintegrative disorder, pervasive developmental disorder, not otherwise spe uh, specified. So you have Asperger's disorder and autistic disorder, their formal uh, categories within the DSM-4 there, um, presenting as what many would call the autistic spectrum. Interestingly, um, as you can see on my slides there, number five is um, where Autistic disorder or Asperger's disorder don't have enough of the little checklists ticked. So if you don't have enough symptoms or they don't classify within various criteria, you might attract a diagnosis of PDD-NOS or pervasive developmental disorder not otherwise specified. And these form main, on, mainly on whole, we would call the autistic spectrum. So here's another quote for you under my category of what is autism. There is no clearly established guidelines for measuring the severity of a person's symptoms. Therefore, the line between autism and PDD-NOS is blurry. And I've put that up there because it means that a formal diagnosis of autism, if not granted formally via um, the diagnostic procedure by a psychiatrist or clinical psychologist or clinician, um, it doesn't mean to say because you haven't been diagnosed, you don't have the symptoms of autism. And I think it's fair to say that the symptoms of autism themselves are uh, in our population as a general trait or part of our personality, affecting people to varying degrees. The distinction that clinicians would make um, within the neuropsychological literature, when I say literature, I mean the research that has been done, is that Formally, autism is a neuropsychological or neuropsychiatric condition. So there are 
differences in the brain. There are neurocorrelates where we can put a person into a scanner and actually see differences in their brain, in the functioning and the structure. So brains doing different things and parts of their brain are sized differently. Now, I must add that this doesn't mean to say all people with autism have different brains. So every time I give you a fact, there's always almost always um, a counter argument to what I'm saying. 